Hey everyone, Nathan Reed and Spruth here. I was actually told I should clean up my room a little bit, maybe get a better wall to put my stuff on. I actually don't have very much space here, so this is what you're kind of going to get. You can tell that my bed is kind of messy and I have a pile of clean clothes and boxes and stuff. And I really don't care, so you shouldn't either. Uh, but I am reviewing today part three of nine. I am insane. Part three of nine of all the NES wrestling games. Now I'm going all the, the non-licensed games first, so pro wrestling, Tecmo, stuff like that. And then I'm going to get into WCW and WWE in case you were wondering what I was doing. So, today I'm doing Tecmo World Wrestling, and I, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. My review will start in three, two, one. As with the last two games, let's talk about the different wrestlers involved in the game. All of the wrestlers are based off of actual wrestlers, so let's talk about them and the actual wrestlers that they're based off of. First we have Akira Dragon, who like fighter Hayabusa is based on Antonio Inoki. Now Antonio Inoki is the most well known Japanese wrestler from the 80s. As I mentioned before, he was so popular that he actually had a match with Muhammad Ali. His signature moves are the back brain kick and the German suplex. El Tigre is based off Tiger Mask, and his signature moves are the northern right suplex in the game, also called the northern lights suplex, and a backdrop. This is the first time that I will say this because there is a translation error and a couple of the other people have the northern right suplex as well, so I'm just going to change it to northern lights suplex in the future. Pat Gordon is based off Lou Thez, who was a very famous wrestler in the 80s. His signature moves are the backdrop and the power slam. Rex Beat is very similar to the Road Warriors, wearing the same kind of getup that they have. Uh, they're also known as the Legion of Doom in the WWE. His moves are the power bomb and the death drop. Jackie Lee, as his name implies, is based off of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. Signature moves for him are the German suplex, just like Brock Lesnar, and a power slam. Boris Chekhov seems to be loosely based off of Stan the Man Hansen. Giant swing and the power slam are his signature moves. Mark Rose is even more loosely designed, but he seems to be designed off of Ric Flair woo, and Ravishing Rick Rude. His moves are the backdrop and the northern light suplex. Julio Falcon looks like a more tanned version of Hulk Hogan, brother. And he uses the Death Drop and the Power Slam. Randy Gomez is similar to Harley Race and the Natural Butch Reed. His moves are the Back Brain Kick and the Power Bomb. Dr. Guldido, I don't know if I messed that up, I apologize, is similar to Big Van Vader. He uses the Death Drop and the Giant Swing, much like Cesaro. Lastly, we have the Blue King. He appears to be very similar to, now I, I'm so sorry, Junji Hirata, Hirata, whatever, and uses every wrestler's technique. He is actually a non-playable character in the game, so you can't unlock him. He's the final boss, as it were. You may have noticed that I didn't actually show off any of the moves from the game. There is a reason for this, is that I actually don't know how to play the game. Don't get me wrong, I do know the basic functions of punch and kick. Uh, you can get someone into a grapple by getting very close to them. And you do a number of different moves based on the directional pads. Also, if you go to the top corner of the turnbuckle, you can actually climb the turnbuckle and perform a flying kick. The problem is, the game is just so random, it's easier to just kick the person in the shins over and over again. That is literally what I did, is just kick everyone, and I would occasionally do a grapple hold on accident, and I beat the game. It's a very good looking game, though. Uh, if you look at the graphics, the graphics are way better detailed than both Muscle and Pro Wrestling. And the music in it is actually pretty good, unlike Muscle, which had no music during the fights. Uh, it is just boring, though. The, the gameplay in general is just boring. It's so easy to just cheese the matches that it makes the game really, really stale. If you don't use my tactic of just kicking the shins and then run away, you do run the risk of actually losing quite easily, as it is a difficult game. 
If you are interested in actually playing the game and you do get the end winning the championship, this game, much like pro wrestling, does allow you to win the championship and defend it. You only get to defend it one time against the Blue King. Uh, here's what happens after you win the final match and get the championship. Now the Blue King is very difficult. As you can tell, having the ability to use every wrestler's technique does make him quite the challenge as you face him. The AI seems to be a little bit spruced up as well. Somehow, I managed to beat him though and retain my championship. Now, honestly, should you play this game? No. I, I like pro wrestling a lot more. It was simpler and it had quite a bit of challenge. Muscle for the NES definitely wasn't as well designed as Tecmo World Championship, but I did have a bit more fun with it as it's not as easy to cheese muscle as it is to beat Tecmo World Championship wrestling. I do like the music included in the game and the character models are really well done though. I do want to thank you for watching until the end. Please, if you want, uh, you can press the little links there. Uh, one will take you to a wrestling review I, I mentioned earlier, and the other will take you to the muscle review. Also, if you feel so inclined, press that big sexy subscribe button so you can see all the future videos. It really does help out a lot.